Hello, in this presentation, we will record an advanced customer payment within QuickBooks Pro 2018. If you've been working along with us, we will be continuing with the Get Great Guitars problem. If you have the backup, you could restore that backup at this point with a file and restore the backup. If not, that is okay. We will be recording an advanced payment, a payment that has been received before the invoice or the goods have been shipped, that being a guitar in this case. In order to work this problem, we currently have the home page open. To open the home page, go to company and home page. We also have the open items list open. That's under view and open window list. Only window open is the home page at this time. Our scenario is here that we have a customer that would like a particular guitar. They've requested to hold that guitar for them. In order to do that, we have requested a deposit on that guitar. So we're going to hold on to this piece of merchandise and therefore give the piece of mer and give that piece of merchandise in the future. So we're not going to recreate an invoice because we have not yet sold it. But we have received money, so we have to record the fact that we've received the money. So this is a circumstance in which it's a little bit backwards when we look at our flowchart, meaning typically we have an invoice and then we collect the money, we get the check in the mail. In this case, we got the money before we create the invoice. So what we're going to do is we're going to create that invoice and we're going to create the receipt payment, depositing or recording the fact that we have that 300 in this case, we're getting $300 for the guitar that we will sell in the future. Then once we sell the guitar, we're going to create the invoice and we have to be able to apply that credit to what has been sold at that point in time. So this is to record a deposit from a customer before the work has been done. In accordance to the revenue recognition principle, we can't credit, we can't record the revenue Therefore, we cannot create the uh, invoice yet because we have not yet earned the deposit we are receiving. Instead, we're going to record this receive deposit or receive payments. And we'll see what the transaction is and look at the financial statements and what's being recorded and how we would then deal with that in the future. So we're going to go to receive payments. We have received a payment for a customer in order to hold on to a particular guitar. That customer is, if we select the drop down, we could find the customer. It's going to be string music, very bottom. I'm going to start typing it in and that will give us the item. So we're going to say tab. We're going to receive 300. The date's going to be the 21st. So I'm just going to hit the up arrow or the up plus button to get to the 21st. It's going to be cash. We're going to say cash here. And then we're not going to have a reference number. And that will be it. So once we have this customer payment, we're going to record this note that it's not being applied to any particular invoice. If there were an invoice that String Guitar had out in place, we would have to make sure that we do not apply to that invoice if it's a deposit on another uh, guitar, an advanced payment that we have. The fact that it's not being recorded to another invoice means that when we create an invoice for this customer, it will then be available to apply that credit, this prepayment, to the invoice that it's created. What's going to be the transaction when we record this? The fact that it's a customer payment means that it's going to be increasing uh, the payments. You would think cash, but typically QuickBooks is going to put it into that undeposited funds account until we put it into the bank, until we go to the bank and, and record the deposit side. So it will be increasing undeposited funds. The other side of it, you would think, would be decreasing a particular person's receivable, typically, when we have a customer payment. But we don't have any invoice here. What it's going to create, then, is a negative, a negative receivable for string music. That is odd. That's not normal accrual accounting. But it works well within QuickBooks, meaning normal accrual accounting would say we would need a liability we would need to credit the liability and say that we owe something uh, uh, in the future. That something in this case being the delivery of the guitar. If we don't, if we don't give that, we should be giving the 300 back. So we owe something in the future. In this case, we're going to have a negative asset. Why? Because that makes it easy for us to track the asset in accordance to the customer. And when we then create the invoice to tie those things out. 
So let's take a look at what that will look like. We're gonna say save and close. And it's gonna say we're gonna create a credit. We're gonna say that is what we want, okay. And look at the reports that we have. We're gonna say reports drop down. We're gonna to go to company and financial. Let's go down to the balance sheet and see what we have in the balance sheet. We're gonna change the dates. So we're gonna to go to customize reports. And the dates will be from 010121. We will be working in the future to 123121. We are working uh, in the future. By changing the date ranges here, although there's only one date here, once we drill down on the data, we won't have to change the data when we look at basically the general ledger or the transaction reports. So we're going to go to the accounts receivable first. Here is the receivable. If we double click on that amount, we see that 300 here. The split, the other accounts going to undeposited. Here's the 300 in the receivable, decrease in the receivable. It's in the receivable, uh, although it's not being applied to any particular invoice, as typically the payments will be. As we can see with some of the payments up top, where we have the 525 here, the payment being related to this invoice, the 430 here being related to this 43050 here. Here we've got the 300 payment not related to any 300 invoice, but decreased in the receivable. If we close this back out, and we then go to the undeposited funds, that's going to be the cash account, undeposited funds, double clicking on that, that should be the other side of the transaction. Scrolling down, we see that 300 there. Double clicking on that, we see our customer payment. Closing this back out, closing this back out, We'll take a look at one more place where this will be, the customer report, the reports by customer. Go into reports up top, go into customer and receivables, scrolling, scrolling down to customer balance detail, and going all the way to the bottom where we have the string music, we see this 300, and it's a, it's a negative receivable. Again, that shouldn't be the case. We shouldn't have a negative receivable. However, the negative receivable helps us when we tie out the invoice to the particular customer so we don't have to be jumping from uh, the liability accounts to the receivable account if we keep it all in the receivable accounts then quickbooks has a nice easy way to tie out the deposit to the later invoice that we will then create if however we were reporting this in terms of the financial statements we would need to take this out of the receivable meaning increase the receivable by that 300 and record a liability for the fact that we have this prepayment and therefore owe something in the future. So be, be aware of that when you go through this process. This process works really good within QuickBooks to tie everything together, but it's not exactly generally accepted accounting principles. If we were to report under generally accepted accounting principles under uh, normal accrual accounting, we would have to increase the receivable by this, not have a negative receivable, increase it by 300 and record the related liability for something that we owe in the future.